How do they operate now? And when you were a cop in Dallas, what kind of presence do the Crips have in Texas and Dallas specifically? They have plenty of a presence. There was a time where they got a little smarter because in the early 90s, you know, cops would pull them over and just identify them by their tattoos. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, it didn't make it hard. And then they started implementing laws against gangs who were practicing gangs. And so when you started getting certain strikes, you were getting arrested for having these identification marks. And so they started trying to call themselves different things here and there. But it returned, you know, by the time I was doing this back in 2005, six, seven, eight, um, they were still Crips. They were still Fortray, mm. Hoova, Deuce. You know, they were the, a lot of the similar names, you know, that had carried over. And they had family here even that had done direct kind of training, so to speak. Mm. So uh, they had tears, but I didn't hear as much. So I didn't hear as much about who was a lieutenant, who was a this. Mm. The structure that I saw had a lot to do with if you're at a bottom level, then you're doing a lot more of the dirty work until you start getting a record, which is, I think that's typical. That's how gangs do. They start recruiting sixth graders, you know, because, well, you're a kid. So if you get caught, you know, you're not going to do life. Yeah. Uh, And you're, you're proving yourself in that way. So a lot of that's still happening even today. But it's it's a little harder to find today because they're a little smarter than just carving four X three across right. their chest every right. time. And nobody's outside anymore. Oh, they're outside, and you know some of the better, smarter ones are. You know, when when you make it to the top, you're not making it to the top just because you're the most ruthless anymore. You're also by far the smartest. You have the the least criminal history of maybe so you've always been involved but you know you don't have something obviously well obviously you're out so yeah. if you can have some tenure and you're out and you're a 30 year old crip and you've got you know bodies on you then you're going to be the dude if you're smart right if you're stupid then you're eventually any day you're going to be going away right and you're driving some kind of car that draws attention you can pull over mm-hmm. every minute mm-hmm. well some of these dudes had real estate licenses owned multiple car lots and storage facilities and, you know, the way you do it, you know. This What's is, the point of being are, a crip when you're a successful entrepreneur? Oh, that makes you wonder, except that, you know, when you're doing 250 grand a week, then you're like, well, you could have done this managing, uh, well, never mind. You're not going to make yeah. that kind of money. Right, right. Okay, so if you're making 250000 a week as a high-level drug dealer, why, how does that cross over with the crips as a gang organization? It's a culture from the socioeconomically disadvantaged neighborhoods. It really is. It is about being in a poor neighborhood. And every, your family member is a crip. Your uncle's a pimp. You're, you're living with your mom, but she has two jobs. So you sp- spend half the week with your auntie or your grandma. And all the other kids are making, you know, $1,000 every week doing, you know, working as eighth graders, making a thousand bucks a week, you know, moving mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And th- your mother who sees you, you know, three hours a day is trying to encourage you to stay in school and go get a legitimate job, which is harder for you to do because of who you are and how your transportation is so limited that you can't go to some place across town and every time and be there on time. Yeah. You're an eighth grader. Yeah. Or even if, even if you're a high school kid mm-hmm. or a, you know, or an mm-hmm. early collegiate aged kid, you know, it's just not as easy. And once you're acclimated and just indoctrinated into that culture after so long, and you don't really have like a father figure, for instance, that's, that has a disciplinary record, mm-hmm. then you're leaning on your, on your bros that mm-hmm. are, that are in the gang. 